let's jump back to uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition. So uh, they spend the winter of 1804 and 1805 with the Mandans and Hidatsas. Uh, before they leave the village, they're going to take on uh, a few more people uh, who were living in the village. One of them, uh, a young girl named Sakakuia, who had recently uh, given birth to a child. She was married to a, a Canadian trapper who was living there in the village as well. Uh, and so her and her child and her husband are going to go along with the Lewis and Clark expedition. Now, what was her role? Well, Sakakuia was not uh, the primary guide for the expedition in that terrain. She did help uh, with guidance, though, uh, but she was an interpreter. Uh, she spoke the Shoshone language because she was actually Shoshone. She wasn't uh, from the Mandan and Hidatsa. Uh, they had kidnapped her before, and that's why she was living there. Uh, and so uh, Sakakuia served as an interpreter uh, when the Lewis and Clark expedition eventually met the Shoshone people. All right. Uh, she also acted as a symbol of peace. Why did she act as a symbol of peace? Uh, because when tribes saw this American expedition, it's possible that they could jump to the conclusion that this was a war expedition, right? Uh, but when they seen a woman with child on this expedition, uh, they realized that this was not a war expedition uh, and they uh, treated them a little more friendly, right, in some cases. So eventually, Lewis and Clark will encounter the Shoshone uh, and the Shoshone will treat them good, especially because Sakakuya is with them, right? Uh, her brother is, is actually a, a village chief, and so they treat them very well. Uh, and the Americans want to conduct trade with the Shoshone. They need horses, right? Because they're about to cross uh, the Rocky Mountains. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's really hard to do unless you got enough horses, right? And so the Americans desperately needed horses. And the Shoshone, they wanted guns. Now, the Lewis and Clark expedition had trade goods with them, but they didn't have a lot of guns. And so they didn't want to trade guns. They wanted to trade other things. Uh, but the Shoshone basically forced them to trade their guns, right, uh, for some horses. And they didn't even give them uh, that good of horses, right? Some of them were pretty old. Uh, but the Americans took it. Right, uh, And the Shoshone also gave the Americans a guide uh, to guide them through the Rocky Mountains. So this is where uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition find that passage through uh, the Rocky Mountains. They don't find it. It's, it's shown to them uh, by Native Americans, right, by the Shoshone. Uh, and so the Americans, led by old Toby, this, this guide, uh, are going to make their way through the Rocky Mountains. Another tribe that they meet uh, after they cross the Rocky Mountains is the Nez Perce. The Nez Perce also treat uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition pretty well. Uh, they feed them, uh, they trade with them, and they agree to an economic alliance uh, with the Americans, but not so much the political alliance, right? That a lot of tribes are not uh, trying to accept this message that the United States now owns their land uh, and then to set up this political alliance with them, no. Uh, but they do want to set up a, a trade a trade relationship with them, right? And part of the reason why the Nez Perce want to trade uh, with the Americans is because they want access to guns, right? Uh, they don't have as much access to the British as other tribes do. Uh, and these other tribes, such as the Black feet, right, in Montana, uh, who have access to trade with the British, they have a lot of firearms. And so uh, tribes like the Nez Perce are eager to set up a trade relationship with the Americans because now they could get firearms, right, and then they could uh, uh, fight back against the Blackfeet, uh, especially when they're going onto the plains and trying to uh, to hunt buffalo, right? That's when they would get attacked. Uh, and so they're, they're okay with setting up an economic relationship with the Americans. So from this point, uh, the Nez Perce will give uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition uh, some more guides and they'll guide them eventually to the Columbia River and from there Lewis and Clark will end up at the Dolls. You guys may remember the Dolls. We talked about the Dolls. It was a, a trade area uh, where a number of different tribes from the Plateau region uh, and from the lower Columbia region in the Oregon Territory would go to trade, right? They would go to the Dolls. It was like this area where there were rapids and there were a couple of tribes there that held trade fairs, uh, the Wishroms and the Wascos. Uh, and so Lewis and Clark will make their way to the Dolls and they'll meet these tribes. Uh, but the Wishroms and the Wascos are not so happy to see the Americans. They don't care so much about setting up a trade relationship with them because they already have a good trading relationship with uh, the British and with a number of tribes in the region. Uh, in fact, they act as intermediaries, right? They're go-betweens uh, for tribes uh, in the various regions of that area, right? So a number of tribes would travel to the Dolls to conduct a trade, and the Wishroms and the Wascos would be holding trade fairs there in that region. And so they don't like the idea of Americans coming into the region because now these Americans may try to take their place, 
right? They may try to uh, dominate trade there. And so uh, the Wishrams and the Waskos are very suspicious uh, of Lewis and Clark and their expedition. Uh, they even uh, steal some of their goods uh, along the way. So Lewis and Clark don't stay very long uh, in that area. Eventually, they make their way all the way to the, to the coast, uh, and then they will set up a fort uh, in the Pacific Northwest called Fort Clatsop. Uh, we can go back to the map really quick and take a look at where this is. Uh, here is Fort Clatsop uh, up here uh, in this area by the Pacific. Uh, and so this is the region of the Clatsop tribe. Uh, and so the Clatsops uh, are very familiar with European trade. Uh, they trade with the British. They're fairly wealthy. They have experience in bartering with Europeans. Uh, and so their relationship with the Lewis and Clark expedition uh, is not the best, at least from the perspective of Lewis and Clark. Right, uh, because they uh, are demanding high prices uh, for goods that Lewis and Clark want. Uh, remember, Lewis and Clark, they need food, right? Uh, their whole expedition of, of people there, they need food, and so uh, they're trying to get food from the Clatsops, but the Clatsops uh, know how to bargain. And they want some of the goods uh, from Lewis and Clark, and so they uh, charge a pretty high price, right? They know that they have them at their mercy, pretty much. Like, they're just stuck there. How else are they going to get food? Uh, and so uh, the relationship between the two is not the best. Uh, eventually, uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition would steal uh, a canoe from the Clatsops and then make their way out of that area and start uh, returning back uh, to St. Louis, okay? And so we showed on the map earlier, well, I guess we could go back really quick. We showed how uh, Lewis uh, on the way back uh, broke apart with a couple of uh, individuals and, and went uh, along the northern route and tried to uh, interact with a few tribes there, particularly the Blackfeet, and then Clark went south. Uh, let's talk about that portion of the return trip home uh, for the Lewis and Clark expedition. Okay, so while Lewis was in the north, he tried uh, to make contact with the Blackfeet. And you may remember earlier I was talking about how the Nez Pierce wanted to get guns from the Americans so that they could fight against the Blackfeet. Well, the Blackfeet already had a trade relationship with the British. They had access to European goods. They had access to guns. Uh, they did not like the idea that the Americans were setting up trade relationships with their enemies and were going to be providing them with arms. Not a good thing. Uh, and so the Blackfeet uh, get into a hostile interaction with uh, with uh, Lewis and his group. Uh, Lewis and his group will end up shooting a couple of Blackfeet, and then uh, they escape out of there and and, and run away. Uh, and eventually, uh, they make their way back to uh, Clark and his portion of the expedition. And from there, uh, they're going to make their way uh, back to St. Louis eventually. And so you can see examples of tribes like the Blackfeet uh, and the Brule Lakota who did not want to set up any kind of economic or political uh, relationship with the United States. Why? because they already dominated the area and they already had access to European goods uh, from the British. And so they seen the Americans basically as a threat uh, to their power and dominance over trade uh, in that region. Okay, finally, let's talk about uh, the aftermath of the Lewis and Clark expedition a little bit more. Uh, so when Lewis and Clark got back to St. Louis, uh, they started to spread all the information that they had gathered uh, on their expedition. They talked about the tribes, the locations, who was friendly, who was not, uh, the routes you need to take. And so a lot of American traders started to travel into the Louisiana Territory after the Lewis and Clark expedition. One of them was a man named Manuel Lisa, uh, who started the Missouri Fur Company. He made his way into the Rocky Mountain region and established uh, Fort Manuel uh, and began to trade amongst the tribes in that region. He would eventually try to establish another fort in that area, but the fort was attacked uh, by the Blackfeet, who we were talking about earlier. Remember, we were saying the, the Blackfeet didn't want the Americans in that region because they had dominated trade in that region, and they already had access to European goods uh, through their interaction with the British. So the Blackfeet attack uh, Manuel Lisa's fort, uh, and eventually uh, the Missouri Fur Company is driven out of the Rocky Mountains. This is all taking place around the War of 1812 uh, when America is at war with the British. And remember, we're saying the British had uh, dominated that area already. Uh, and so for a while, uh, the Americans were not active in the Rocky Mountain region. Uh, but eventually they would return and establish a new company called the Rocky Mountain Fur Company. Uh, and the Rocky Mountain Fur Company would set up annual trade fairs where a number of different tribes, uh, as well as Mexican traders, uh, would journey to the region uh, and conduct trade uh, every year. 
and these would be you know huge events, basically large parties. People would play games, have fun. Uh, some would be drinking, and so there was a big turnout, a lot of trade. People looked forward to it, uh, and ultimately these trade fairs uh, would help to cement the relationship uh, between American traders uh, and the tribes of that region. Remember, tribes of that region wanted access to American goods, uh, primarily firearms, so that they could fight back uh, against tribes who were dominating that region, like the Blackfeet. But also, uh, these American traders were getting the tribes to be more and more dependent on them for access to these Euro-American goods. Okay, uh, And so this, remember, was one of the goals uh, of the Lewis and Clark expedition, right, to undermine the British uh, trade in that area. And so that's what the Americans were doing there with the Rocky Mountain Fur Company. They were getting tribes uh, dependent on them. So if tribes wanted access to guns, if they wanted access to steel pots and other American goods, uh, they had to go to the American traders. And so that's one of the reasons why these annual trade fairs uh, were so popular uh, amongst the tribes uh, in that region.